I did a poll a couple of days ago and the second most popular item in the poll is they wanted to know about jobs in 2023. So I thought I would uh, work on that for you now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to outline 12 tips, 12 steps to landing jobs in general. In terms of 2023, it's the same process, except you're going to have to work maybe a little bit harder, although that's not necessarily for sure. So recession, depending on who you talk to, recession is already here. Recession is on the way. What does that mean? That just means a little slowdown in the economy. That said, developers are usually, they usually do pretty good. If they get laid off at company A, they typically can find jobs pretty easily in company B, C, and D. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. But how about people new to the game? How about people who have never had a job before as a developer? And uh, so I'm going to help you to understand the steps that you need to take to, uh, to get a job. Let's just jump into how to land jobs in 2023. I'm going to go over these 12 steps and then we'll do a little Q&A. Typical. So number one. Just in case, just in case. Number one, you got to know your fundamentals. So I'm going to talk more or less in the terms of uh, web design and development, but this applies to any type of development, really. So first of all, you have to know your fundamentals. You have to have a good, solid understanding of that. Anybody who watched my channel for any period of time knows, you know, I'm talking about how important that is. So no, assuming you know your fundamentals, in the web stack, that's HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, understanding client server model, the request response model, uh, server side rendering versus client side rendering. You don't necessarily have to be a full stack coder developer, but you should understand it. If you have a touch of full stack knowledge, that will just increase your chance of getting a job. That will just increase your chances of getting a job, although it's not an absolute. So yeah, know your fundamentals. If you don't know what the fundamentals are, you can check out previous videos about it, but I just named a few things. Knowing your fundamentals goes way beyond just understanding the languages. You have to be able to produce something. So that uh, leads me to my next point. Point number two, after you got the fundamentals under control, then you want to build a portfolio website. You know, your showcase on the web. Make sure it looks good. Even if you're selling yourself as a backend developer, still make sure your portfolio website looks good. The portfolio website uh, should be um, a properly hosted site. You can do it for free on GitHub and so on, but um, it should basically be an outline of the work you've done and have your resume as well. So one of the catch 22s in getting your first job is a lot of jobs out there. They say, well, you need to have experience to get the job. So how do you get experience? If you don't have, if you can't get a job, how are you supposed to get the experience? This is what I hear all the time. Well, the, the hack for that, the cheat code for that is to go out and do two to three, two to three small free freelance projects. They could last a week. They could last two weeks. It could be for a local coffee shop, a butcher, a local nonprofit. It doesn't really matter who you do the job for. And it doesn't really matter what you're doing in, in many respects. It could be building a website from scratch, updating their website, updating their WordPress, who knows, setting up their Shopify. The key is to be able to show some real world work. One project that you do, even for free, is worth 100 tutorials that you, uh, you, would, you could do online. So getting those two to three projects serves two purposes. Number one, well, three. One, it gives you confidence because you're going to work with people and understand the process of development. Number two, it's going to add, you're going to add uh, much needed experience. Uh, and then number three, you're going to have some sites to show, some projects to show, real world projects to show that you will put on your portfolio site. When you go into a job interview and you can actually show real world work that you've done for somebody, that's worth a lot. So that's a crucial step, the crucial third step in the process. So number one, know your fundamentals, enough to be able to do this stuff. Number two, build the portfolio site. Number three, do two to three uh, small free freelance projects for local nonprofits, so on. Uh, then once you have these projects, you put them on your portfolio site. You're in a much better position at that point in time. Number four, 
Uh, you want to study your target market in terms of jobs. So start looking on job sites, local job sites, indeed.com, whatever it is, and find out what skills they're looking for. What you'll find is different regions uh, around the world, even within a country, will have different um, uh, demands. So you may find like in New York City, there's a lot of Java and C Sharp. You may find in San Francisco, maybe a lot of Ruby and JavaScript as an example. So you have to check to see in your area or the area you're interested in working, what the demand is in terms of uh, the coding skills. So you align yourself accordingly, right? If you're in an area where there's tons of work in JavaScript and you only know Python Django, you should, you should bone up with some JavaScript, go out, do some JavaScript gigs. So number five, you want to update your resume, your CV, based on the type of job or the type of company you want to work for. So you study the market, you may you see what the demand is, and then you find a few companies where there's some openings, then you tailor your resume according to the openings. In simple terms, if they're looking for JavaScript node developers, that should be emphasized in your resume, not your Python Django work, not your WordPress uh, PHP work. Does that make sense? So yeah, you want to target, you want to uh, massage your resume according to your target business. Number six, so when you're looking to work for a particular company, get to know the companies. Look, Learn as much as you can about the company so you understand uh, what type of business they do, who they deal, deal with, what technologies they use, even some names if you can get some names. Uh, this way, when you uh, go into an interview, if you get an interview, you'll be able to put intelligent questions to them. That's important. Number seven, update your LinkedIn profile. Very important, update your LinkedIn profile. If you don't have a LinkedIn, get a LinkedIn profile going and update that. That's going to be important. A lot of people use LinkedIn to find uh, candidates. Uh, number eight, here we go. This is when the rubber meets the road, as they say. You spent a lot of effort learning how to code, uh, doing your free freelance projects, getting it, doing your market research. The next step of the game is to start applying to many jobs. Why many jobs? Because you, you have to expect uh, rejections and ghosting. Uh, a lot of times companies will get uh, several resumes and they're just busy and they won't respond to you. They may respond to you eventually or may respond to you a month from now or two weeks from now or four months from now or never. So it's kind of like fishing. I don't know if you've ever been fishing. You throw the line out, you bring it in, you throw the line out, bring it in. You can't throw out one cast and, and, and wait and hope and hope and hope. You gotta, you gotta just expect, you gotta do lots of repetition, lots of repetition. It's like boxing and boxing, you're throwing out that jab and you, if you're lucky, or well, if you're really good and you're talented and you're much better than your opponent, half the jabs might, might hit, half the punches might hit if you're really, really, really at the top of your game. Same thing with applying for jobs. Don't feel bad that you have to apply many, many, to many, many companies and you won't hear back from them, especially this time of the year, by the way, it's the holidays. People are thinking about uh, going on vacation, they're thinking about Christmas, etc. in many parts of the world. So during the holiday season, don't expect that you're going to get um, necessarily a lot of response immediately. But it doesn't, doesn't matter, keep applying, keep applying, keep applying. Number nine, number nine. When asked, when you're asked to go to an interview, prepare, appropriately for the interview. So let's say you throw out a whole bunch of resumes, and you apply to many jobs, and you finally get an interview with a company. Research that company even better. Understand what they want. Figure out what type of, uh, what the interview, try to figure out, try to find out information what the interview process is going to be about. Find out a lot about the company. If you find that they learn, they use a particular technology, bone up on it so you really know it well. So that when you go in, into the interview, you can ask them questions. You can show that you're interested in their business. Again, when you're being hired hired as an employee, you are being hired to make their lives easier. You are being hired to help the company reach its goals. So if you can show some initiative that you care about uh, the company, then uh by knowing about it, that's going to help you in terms of landing jobs. Number 10, you got to present yourself well. So don't go into the interview with a hat on. 
uh, dress fairly well, not, not necessarily suit and tie or anything, but just dress well, clean, uh, as I like to say, don't smell, and know a little bit about the company. You want to be on time, be on time. When I would go in for meetings with new clients, if my meeting was at 10 a.m., I would show up outside the building for 9.30. I would plan for 9.30 just in case I ran into traffic or something. And if I got there early, I would just, um, I would wait outside. Don't want to arrive too early. It's not good. And you don't want to arrive late. That's bad. Hey, you arrive five minutes earlier. That's the way to go. Hold on a second. Number 11, if rejected, if you're rejected, two weeks later, they may send you an email and say, ah, we went with another candidate. That's okay. Part of the process. Don't feel bad about it. But uh, what you got to do is you have an opportunity here to ask them, ask them, how could you have improved yourself in terms of their eyes? What was the reason why you didn't, they didn't go with you? And start gathering this information for every, every interview that, did you, that you do. Ask them, how can you improve things? What can you do to, uh, what could you have done? And slowly, slowly, you're going to get feedback. Not everybody's going to give it to you, but uh, the nice ones will. And you can use that information to keep improving your uh, interview techniques and skills. And the final thing, just repeat, man, just repeat. You may have to go to uh, several interviews. You may, you're probably going to have to send a lot of resumes. I know highly experienced, very competent developers who took months to get a, a new job. This is after experience. So don't let it get you down that you don't get uh, jobs very, very quickly. So there you go. In a nutshell, those are the uh, 12 steps. I'll re just recap it very quickly. Number one, know your fundamentals. Number two, build a portfolio site. Number three, uh, create two to three small freelance projects. Uh, number four, study your target market. Figure out what the skills are, what's in demand in your area. Update your CV. Target your CV based on the particular job you're, you're applying to. Get to know the companies you're looking to work for. Number seven, update your LinkedIn account profile. Set one up if you don't already have. Apply to many jobs and expect many rejections. Number nine, when asked to interview, prepare for the interview. Make sure you're, you're, you're up to date on everything. Uh, number 10, present yourself well. Be on time. Dress well. Know a little bit about, again, know a little bit about the company. Number 11, if rejected, ask, ask them. What could you have done to prove? Why did you select somebody else over me? Where did I come in? Any feedback would be appreciated. Very important. And number 12, repeat. So there you go, man. I wouldn't be too concerned about 2023. If you follow my advice, like have uh, emergency FU money on the side, live below your means, you'll be okay. So I hope that was useful.